Welcome to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. Join us as we share our favorite RPGs, one-shot games, tabletop games, reviews, and convention panels. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. All right. Oh, uh, we are almost ready to roll. Uh, it looks like my whole entourage is ran left. off. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to do some stuff. Uh, warm up. My computer's warming up. You guys like my DJ setup? Like, yeah. I slapped this together with all my luggage. And I'm like, this looks good. Hey, Necro DJ. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the DC stuff. Yeah. I want to dance with my dead grandma. One day I'll actually like paint it and make it look cool, but you know, we're getting there. If any of you are in here hoping that this is the storytelling panel, oh, you're in the oh, wrong room. Oh, I hate to break it to you, the storytelling panel is over. Tales from what are you doing? I'm just saying, education is insane. Are you sniping my audience? No, <laughs> that's all. Oh, that's all. Oh, that's all. Oh, that's what people are right. okay. Choices. Tales from the panel. Shenanigans. Shenanigans. Oh, I mean, the breakdown. So funny. I've got some new stuff in there. I'm gonna play a little bit of music already. Things started and set up. I mean, especially in the seance. I mean, the hosts has not been too bad. So, the song starts. Someone's having like a 1920 grand in the back. That's us. We're having a 1920 grand in the back. That's us. We're doing this. Oh, so it's a baby's first friend and not baby's first ghosties? Why can't it be both? Why not both? Check, check, check. Chickity check. My mic, my mic smells nice. Check one. My mic smells nice. Check one. Where is this one? It wants me. All right. It is cold, too. The spirits are cold. So my biggest regret is that I didn't bring my... Yeah. Uh, should I do this one? 
think I can see this with a mask on. I'm gonna do it with a mask. We're gonna give it a try. Uh, first, heads up. I do not consider myself a musician by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, in uh, for the spirit of me remembering all these little historical factoids, I actually crammed them into some songs. So I'm gonna be squawking into this microphone and singing you a little ditty, and please keep the uh, the, the tomato throwing to the middle. Save all your tomato throwing to the end. All right. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go big fast food, we have tomatoes under outside. Oh, actually, test these around and uh, y'all introduce yourselves. Oh. Hi! 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 I'm Chief Hazard. I'm wearing a hoop skirt because it's pretty. <laughs> You're so pretty. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> Hi, I'm Killian. I'm Judah the Assistant. <laughs> if anybody needs an assistant, I'm here for you. Bless it be the assistant. She's here to assist. I'm also a demon and a wolf, so. If you need a demon and a wolf, she's here for you. Woo! <laughs> I'm still a ski fashion. I'm very pretty. I'm very pretty. I'm very pretty. Woo! <laughs> um, and everyone knows our friend Charlie. Say hi, Charlie. Okay. You never know. Yeah, but it might happen one day. Alrighty, so, uh, this is gonna be kind of loose. And there's a lot to cover, and I feel like the people that have already been a part of this whole little shindig know a thing or two about a thing or two about a seance. So, uh, first question, am I squawking too loudly over no. here? No. If I decide to go, ah, will you guys be uh, too traumatized? Will you guys? Okay, cool. No, we're good, we're good. I'm a metal man, I gotta go hard. Look at that. Okay, so, welcome to dissection of a seance three, spirit swing. And I am now going to introduce the players to the seance. First and foremost, we have the skeptic. Now, no seance would actually be complete without someone sitting there telling you how whatever you're doing is completely preposterous. <laughs> it's completely preposterous. And here we have the plague nurse. Uh, not a usual fixture of a seance, but just one of the common guests. This person leans uh, towards both aspects of the spiritualism world. Okay, a little bit of fact, factual stuff. Uh, I looked it up, and I was thinking, well, how did the whole spiritualism thing kick off? What gave itself the means to be a spirit? We good? Um, I was uh, under the impression that everybody during the Victorian era was just a bunch of Bible thumping weirdos, but that's actually not the case. What actually was uh, the case? was uh, 30 to 35 percent of the actual American Victorian population was of a Christian denomination of one or the other. Um, uh, the rest of the folks have indigenous beliefs, and uh, there was, uh, I think it's a safe assumption to say that they, uh, the general consensus was, uh, yes, you have some sort of a spiritual center, a soul, if you will, and there is some sort of an afterlife. What does that look like? What does it function like? Who knows? But it was this sort of loose, loosey-goosey philosophy which allowed the seance scene to rise to prominence during the Victorian era. So it wasn't just a whole bunch of Christians and stuff, because otherwise you'd just be like, this is the work of the devil. It looks like a bunch of devil stuff going on. I'm skeptical! Yes. Yeah. Still skeptical. I'm a demon talking about. It is our task to convince this individual over here that what we are doing is indeed somebody, a spirit. Now, uh, how should I introduce you? Uh, Jackson, because I only wear my suit. Jackson! Uh, this is Jackson, oh. also another one of the mini guests. Um, oh, I see that you found one of our mini props. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit later. Uh, I would say that Jackson is just another one of our guests, uh, here to just see what happens. This is their first seance, and they're just kind of taking it in. Yes. And, who are you? Uh, I am the assistant. <laughs> oh yeah, you already introduced yourself. <laughs> uh, the I'm assistant. skeptical! <laughs> <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> well, the bag man is the real secret title of this particular character. Now, what is the bag man, you may say? Well, the bag man is the person that's in on the gig. They realize that what they're doing is just a farce. They're not actually summoning a spirit. 
They're in charge of sneaking in the goods, the tricks of the trade, all the secret little tools which are required to fool people into thinking, oh yeah, we're contacting the spirit. Yes, they're skeptical. <laughs> so, which brings us to the anatomy of a spirit. Now what the heck is a spirit? Is it just something inside of you? Is it an external force? Is it like a shaman belief? Who knows? Uh, what, what do you think it is? Ah, uh, you're probably not right anymore. <laughs> Truth is, none of us know. And a matter of fact, even if you died, you probably wouldn't know either way. You'd just be more confused and then just corporeally confused. So, it's not my job, because everyone comes from different spiritual backgrounds. All walks of life. And it's not my job to step on our spiritual belief system. That's the skeleton's job. But what I am here to tell you is that I think there is a soul, uh, but I don't have much evidence to prove it. But what I do have is a little song. And it's called, Where Do We Go When We Die? And I would love to sing it to you. <laughs> Suppose if you would, that then your body lies a soul, and if we could derive when your body dies, the placement if we should, the nature of the afterlife, neither evil nor good, the slice before the knife in many religions and spiritualism. There is no such division, the underworld is given Whether heaven or hell, a place to call for yourself Purgatory, fragmentation, dispersal of information Conjure a vision, a multiversal claim Multiversal vision, blah 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 Whether rock, a tree, a plant, or beast A spiritual component to a material essence Where do we go? Where do we go? Where do we go? When we die, where do we go? Contradictory points of evidence, testimonials from their death experience, spirit strips by shaman seers and clairvoyants describing things by human measurements. With an application of physics, we can observe how dead things think of both by breaking down its individual things. <laughs> a chemical abuse in the microbial putrefaction brings what happens that day crops he makes the whole world sing. Where do we go when we die? Where do we go? Where do we go when we die? Where Does that mean each 
cell has a spirit? Does that mean each atom has a spirit? Does that mean everything? It's kind of a rhetorical question if you think about it. who's running the seance. They're in charge of being the intermediary between the medium and the asking of the questions of the medium. Because the medium is going to slip into like a trance state. Uh, for those who are more psychically receptive, uh, you know that the trance state is a sort of um, a relaxed state of being that allows you to be more receptive to spiritual things. So. Uh, you don't want to have one person interpreting the will of the spirits, and then the other person on the other side of the table interpreting the will of the spirits, because now you got the dueling banjos of spirit stuff. <laughs> so you leave it to one person, who is me. Actually, uh, I guess I'll, I'll take the role of the host. Hello, and welcome to the seance. You might be wondering why I all brought you here today. We're going to summon a spirit, obviously. Duh. And now begins the skepticism part. You're a skeptic, aren't you? I'm told I am. I think that what would what would actually change your mind as to summoning a spirit? Do you think I have the ability to summon a spirit? Yeah. Yeah. I'm they all do. Uh, Thank you. Still the skeptic. Uh, yes. I was introduced earlier as that my role is. Let me just have this moment. And uh, rest assured, I am I am skeptical. Okay. So, you bring everybody to the seance, you set them all down, and the skeptic is an important aspect of that, because if you can convince the skeptic, you got everyone else covered. So, there's a little bit of tomfoolery that takes place after the seance scene started kicking off, and the spiritual movement started toward the Victoria era, and sort of petered off toward the end of 1930-ish, um, which I will discuss later as to why that actually happened. But first, we have a seance, and we have a bunch of items, and you are here for a reason, to summon a spirit. But you don't want to do it the, the palm foolery way. You don't want to have just a bunch of strings and smoke and mirrors and all that stuff. No, no, no. You have to inspect every single person that goes to here. So you're like, let me, let me inspect you, you know, kind of, you know, but I'm a you know, Victorian age, so I'm not gonna like touch you too much because, you know, courtesy and stuff. Um, but, some of the greatest mediums had to undergo rigorous, like, pat-downs and stuff to make sure that they weren't packing any sort of weird, funny business to help them do spiritualism and stuff. So one of the acts of a seance is the, uh, the mutual assurance of every party involved that you've all had your chance to inspect the objects, inspect the table, make sure that there's nothing floating around. What's in here? Evil? <laughs> no, we're good. So, uh, now that we've done a full, uh, yeah, everything's fine. I, I, I checked. No evil down here. No evil to be had here. Mm -hmm. Can you check the hoop skirt? Except for the hoop skirt. What is that? And so, you've all done your inspections. You've all inspected each other. You've all come to the conclusion that, hey, this is on the up and up. Okay, let's kick off the seance properly. So, I'd like everybody to join hands. Yes, with with Charlie's will. Yes, very good. <laughs> and in a typical setting, this would be done in a round table. But uh, for the purposes of demonstration and seeing stuff, we made it a flat table. So the idea is everyone will be holding hands, 
That way no one can have any funny trickery going on. But uh, it's actually quite easy to get out of these little handholds, which I can uh, demonstrate in a second. But you would all start off by saying something like this. Oh, great spirits. Oh, uh, close your eyes. Oh, great spirits. We invite thee to our parlor to partake in communion with the afterworld life. Uh, we ask that you don't bring any negative spirits in here because that's how that works. And uh, now that we've got that all settled, come on down. And then later on, we'll send you away at our own discretion. Right. And then it starts. Uh, the medium will slip into a trance-like state. Charlie, you're doing real good. And they would uh, begin to interpret the will of the spirits. And it would be the job of the host to ask the questions to the medium, who were not responding from the medium's perspective, were responding from the spirit's perspective, being told out through the medium. Got me? So. <sighs> How do I get out of these hand-holding situations? I hate hand-holding. <laughs> I mean, I'm enjoying myself. Um, so I am skeptical. Uh, can I get your left hand to hold this microphone and put it up to my mouth so I can talk? And hold my hands. And we would do something like this. <laughs> We've all held hands this entire time, and I've made sure that no one has dis uh, uh, gotten away from this entire thing. Oh, excuse me, what was that? What was that? <laughs> and that's how you get out of the handhold situation. <laughs> There would be all sorts of dumb things where they would be like, allow me to read for my handkerchief. You're not gonna let somebody be like, no. <laughs> let your nose run, we're doing seance stuff. <laughs> so you would allow them to get their uh, handkerchief or reach out for something. There would be a number of ways that you could inventively force another person to hold hands with someone. That was a, uh, a really shoddy attempt at giving, <laughs> forcibly forcing hands together. But there's another way to do it, uh, which was demonstrated by the great Houdini and a, and a funny pamphlet that I'm going to try and do with my arm for my for all holding. And then you would say something along the lines of, uh, Oh dear, I'm talking about it! Much smoother. <laughs> and then there would also be things too where, uh, realizing that holding the hand wasn't always going to work out, so people would be forced to hold each other's wrists. And that also leads itself to another tomfoolery issue where, here, let me try again. <sighs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'm sorry, I have a nervous uh, constitution here. <laughs> Ta da! And now you're free! And when the lights are out, and the candles are lit, and the ambience is like nice and right, you feel like you're holding hands with somebody else. Because you are. And you've allowed the other person to slip away into the shadows and perform all the tomfoolery required to convince the skeptic and everyone else at the table that this is real. Oh my gosh. So, you've worked your way out of the hand-holding situation. Good job. What do you do next? Well, you have the bag man, who's in charge of this, to bring in the bag of tricks. They would bring in the strings, they would bring in the ropes, they would bring in the sticks, they would bring in all of the, the fake stuff, the ectoplasm, all that good thing. What's ectoplasm, you might ask? I'll get to it. So, let's go over the history of a seance. Now, I said that only 30 to 35 of the American population was actually indeed of a Judeo-Christian descent of any kind. Everyone else is more kind of open-minded to whatever. You know, spirit, maybe, afterlife, probably. Uh, everything else other than that. <laughs> <coughs> so, we actually have historical precedent, which can pinpoint the exact moment the seance scene kicked off properly, and that is with two capricious little girls known as the Fox Sisters. And I looked it up, and no, they're not actually foxes. <laughs> <laughs> I figured somebody would have to know this. Uh, so, the Fox Sisters were known for being precocious. They were like playing pranks on their family members. But one night, something weird happened. Something really weird happened. Uh, and I wrote a song about it. So I'm gonna sing you a little song. This song is dedicated to the Fox Sisters, but more importantly, to the entity they were communicating with, which they named Mr. Splitfoot.
sister known as Leah Fish, and I looked it up, no, she's not a fish, <laughs> and they uh, did all sorts of amazing uh, on-the-road tours, they even toured with B.T. Barnum for a little while, but eventually it all came to a stop when there was dissension amongst the ranks. As a matter of fact, um, the Fox sisters started having a falling out. Uh, Leah Fish, you went on and moved, uh, married your husband, and the husband was probably all like, why are you doing all this tomfoolery? Aren't you supposed to be doing women stuff? And she's like, okay, fine. And unfortunately, this falling out resulted in a very uh, embarrassing display when Leah Fish decided to uh, do a personal performance all over her lonesome 
and she invited a bunch of people over to an amphitheater, and she said, okay, here's the deal. We weren't really talking to the spirits. All of us were just snapping our toe joints and popping our knees. We all knew how to do this. And allow me to demonstrate. Oh, great spirit! What is one plus one? Weird. Stuff like that. And so, as you can imagine, the show was not a resounding success. It actually buried the reputation of the Fox sisters and Leah Fish, and it was said that she actually retracted her statement after the fact. She said uh, that I was, uh, I'm paraphrasing here, but essentially I was trying to hurt my sisters, and this was the one way I knew how. As a matter of fact, we've been communing with the spirits this entire time, and it is a huge disrespect to myself and to the spiritualism community in, at large for what has happened. But the damage was done, yo! There was no way of going back from that. And now, before you knew it, you had the spiritualism movement kicking off, you have people that truly believed that they were contacting spirits, and then you have the other half of the people that were grifters and shysters, and people that were just being like, oh yeah, I can summon a spirit every single show, guaranteed, or your money not going back. <laughs> <coughs> now, what are some of these Tricks of the trade, might ask. You guys like this crystal ball. <laughs> Alright, uh, so let's start off with some very obvious and simple stuff. Can anybody tell me what this is? It's a bell. bell. It's a bell jar. Yeah, close enough. It's a bell and a bell jar. It's not Taco Bell, it's Bell Jar. And, <laughs> I'm sorry. We're very sorry. So how does the bell jar work? Well, it's very simple. It's a Victorian object. You keep it in your house. And as you can see, I can't make the bell ring without physically interacting with it in some way. So if it were to just say, randomly go off, ghosts. <laughs> ghosts. That's, it's that easy. And there's also another way, too, that you could go about the same sort of trick, is you would sit there and you look at the, be like, oh, great spirit, if you are here, Send us a sign! Oh wow. Ghosts. <laughs> I'm skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> you have to remember, there wasn't the internet back then. They were just kind of figuring stuff out. Uh, but this trick would be performed in a number of ways. I am demonstrating with like a fishing line. Back in the day, I don't believe they had a fishing line filament sort of thing, but what they did have was stockings. And those had a sort of elastic-y string which you could actually pull out and use for all sorts of things. And they're also very thin, very small, and they can carry a decent chunk of weight. Enough to certainly smack you in the head with a flying violin when you're not paying attention. <laughs> Which is what they would do. So. I'm sure, I'm sure you're riveted with all this spiritual commentary. And you're just feeling the wave of the spirits coming over. I'm just worried about violins. <laughs> okay, well, close your eyes. Oh, dear. I said close your eyes. Oh, no, oh, all right. oh great spirit of the tambourine. If you're here, send us a sign. Did you hear that? Ghost. <laughs> um, yeah, another dumb thing. There would be a medley of instruments that would be implemented. Uh, like I was talking with a hand holding bit, there was a uh, one gimmick where the person, uh, typically the bag man, um, also the bag man doesn't necessarily have to sit at the table, the bag man may not even be in anyone's sight. He may be uh, standing behind a false wall, or hiding behind all of those eccentric curtains you have hanging up inside of the seance room. Uh, their job is to uh, lurk in the shadows and do the tomfoolery. Meanwhile, the host is doing the hosting thing, and then you got the, uh, the, all the other players that are holding their hands so no one else is getting up and running around. And so the bag man is just running around, smacking people with violins and going, ooh. And you're like, oh, you hear that? Yeah. Ghost. The ghost. <laughs> <laughs> so another one of the uh, fun little hand-holding things that I read was that someone had contacted the spirit of a drowning victim, and they had loosened their hands from the hand-holding thing so that they could tuck a uh, horn into their mouth and point it to a bucket of water that they had hiding under the table and do gurgling moaning sounds. Mm. 
Anyway, we're not going to do that. Unless you want to. Can we set, can we set that up next time? Okay, well, let's try it. <laughs> do you have a dirty bottle? The breathing water is hard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I was holding your hand while I was doing it. <coughs> but that was fun. We just like holding hands. I, yes, yes. Close your eyes. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, so we got the tambourine, the bell jar. Uh, we got, oh, geez. Uh, where is my little bag of tricks? Over here. Um, this is also super duper dumb, but I think it's one that just busted out anyway. Uh, another one of the fun little musical instruments. Just turn the thing open. Uh, <laughs> is that they would contact the spirit of some old time prospector guy and they would hide a harmonica in their car. They'd be like, oh spirit, give us a sign. <laughs> Goes. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> If you play a musical instrument poorly, it kind of sounds like a ghost if you think about it. <laughs> so, what other tricks of the trade are there? We need to fool the skeptic, because he's... What are you? I'm skeptical. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well... Let's try this one on for size. Who knows what ectoplasm is? I think ghost jizz. Ghost jizz! That's a good answer. Anyone else? <laughs> Anyone else? That's actually probably the perfect answer. <laughs> Close it up! <laughs> how does how do we explain the ghost jizz? Uh, <laughs> well, let's demonstrate it, shall we? Do we, do we have to demonstrate it? Let's do it! I mean, not the jizz. Oh, just close your eyes! Close your eyes. trying to reach into the physical world, that was a spirit trying to manifest as a ghost jizz, who knows. Um, but I hate to break it to you, but ectoplasm, as far as we know, is not real in this context. But, let me just demonstrate what it would look like in a seance setting. they would have the ability to cram this sort of uh, gossamer crud into their mouth and sort of like squirrel cheek it. I'm so sorry to interrupt. Your doors are locked for some reason. Oh. So if you can, keep one propped open. Oh yeah, sounds good. We appreciate you. Sorry to interrupt. Okay, it's all good. No escape. No escape, it's just you're getting your lunch. Oh, okay. You want to see this? Want to see this ectoplasm jump out of this gas mouth? Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. The spew. All right. Uh, on the count of three. One, two, two three. three. Woo! Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. The Get out of there! Yeah. Get out of there! Wow, he's really. <laughs> Ta da! Jumped the freaking table and he's just like, <laughs> and all the people at the side were holding on and flipping out and laughing. I'm like, it's easier, they make it look so easy in the movies. It's a lot harder in real life. So that is the ectoplasm thing. Get back in your ghost box. <laughs> all right. We can get you some new ectoplasm. Are you convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that spirits are real now? I mean, I was told that it was ghost goods. I was expecting it to come out of his head. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Do you see the Uh, I'm not sure it's any better. Alright. Oh, spirits, if you're here, send us a sign! <laughs> okay! Alright! <laughs> Alright! 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 Alright!
Okay, that's the ectoplasm bit. Did you see? All right. Um, so, we've gone through the birth of the seance movement, the birth of spiritualism. Uh, we talked about mediums and what a medium does, what their job is, and what their job is not. Their job is not to make up a bunch of funny business, their job is to talk as if they were the spirit. There's a really interesting video on the YouTubes, uh, if you ever get a chance to check it out, of this one medium who is channeling the spirit of uh, John Adams or Abraham Lincoln, I believe. And so the video, it's like one of the earliest images of a medium doing a trance state. And this woman, she does this, she does this little number for a while. And then she was, and then she stood up, kind of hunched her hands on her, like she was holding a little pill. And then she began to quote verbatim something that I believe Abraham Lincoln was saying about the, the brotherhood of man or some crap. And so while this was happening, the entire time she's sitting there talking like she's Abraham Lincoln, uh, one of the stage lights breaks and swings into the frame. And everyone at the table is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And they're all like, they're like moving it out of the way. They're trying to no, like. Keep it, keep it down, keep it down, keep it down, keep no it down. No escape. Keep it no down. escape. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, we gotta open back up. <laughs> oh, we gotta open up the door. That's why. Uh, yeah, house I know. Because it was locked and I couldn't get in. Yeah. Oh, right, right. That's why we were. That'd be why. All right. But I'm skeptical. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> sorry. I'm tired of doing it too. We're, we're, I'm, I'm helping. Uh, where. What is our time at? You were my timekeeper, but now you're part of the seance. It's 1130. We got a little bit of time. Okay, time. Cool. Yeah. I'm so scared. Right, I'm gonna wrap up my that little spiel. Uh, so anyway, she's doing her Abraham Lincoln bit. A studio light comes swinging into the frame, almost takes her out. And the, uh, there's other gentlemen sitting at a, uh, on chairs, and they're like, whoa, whoa. And they're all grabbing the cords, trying to move it out of the frame of the camera. Meanwhile, she does not skip a beat. She's just like, oh, motherhood, man, and emancipation, cool and stuff. And uh, that's my Abraham Lincoln. Thank you. Uh, that was the, uh, and so I watched this video repeatedly, trying to like suss out what was her grip? What was she doing? Was she actually in a trance state contacting the spirit of Abraham Lincoln or whoever? And was doing a true interpretation from beyond the grave, or was she just really method? Like, really, she's like, I have a speech and I'm not stopping until I'm done. <laughs> I've met people like that. So, uh, who is uh, the greatest skeptic of all time? You might wonder. Houdini. 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 The greatest magician who has ever lived. Now, I mean, okay, he was like an escapist or whatever, but yeah, I would say he's the greatest magician ever. Fight me on that. He, he, he went to mediums and just like dissected their whole entire One day you're really good at taking a punch, and the next day you're not. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't ready, okay? In case you guys don't know, Houdini died. Yeah. Not in the glass casket kit trick that I thought he did. For the longest time, I always thought he died in the glass casket. Uh, gimmick. No, what had happened was that I think it was like some guy at Harvard, some dude bro. He was like, "Hey, you can you can take a punch really well, right?" And, and Houdini was like, before he could even say yeah, yeah, he some dude like railed him right in the gut, and his appendix burst. And instead of Houdini being like, "I need to seek medical attention immediately," he was like, "I'm gonna lay down." <laughs> he threw a bunch of glitter and vanished in a puff of smoke. <laughs> And then he walked it off, and he's in the next show. But we have a game to think for a lot of really cool that stuff. So this cool. man was probably the definition of an overachiever. This guy was blowing minds, doing a mass of incredible stuff, being like, hey, build a safe, put me in the safe with a straitjacket, lock the straitjacket, lock the safe, lock the, uh, wrap that in chains, dangle that thing over the bridge, and in under 30 minutes, I'm going to get out. By the way, you built the safe. And they were like, okay. They built a super robust safe, and Houdini would actually have his bagman sneak into the safe place that where they make the safes and actually fiddle with it and uh, dismantle it so he could actually get out. That's the real magic right there. It's pre-planning. He was the, the Batman of magic. <laughs> so he was also a huge, huge skeptic 
This man did not believe in ghosts. Ghosts aren't real. As a matter of fact, I don't think any of this real. I think it's just a bunch of hooey, a bunch of hogwash, just a bunch of barnacles, a load of fish paste, if you will. And he was on a warpath to disprove the entire thing. He would do demonstrations. He was like, I can do every single thing you see at a seance and then prove to you that it was actually just made up. And at the time, it wasn't really hard to fool a bunch of people because they would just see like a drawing of, uh, you know, Beethoven on a balloon that would just get blown up in the dark. I death. And they're like, wow, that was Beethoven. Uh, I guess he would, yeah, he's German, right? I death. You gotta, you gotta put some stain on it. All right. Yeah, I'm still skeptical. Something, <laughs> something's happening because that, that, that magic curse is all well. It's going on like crazy. Spirits. Last yeah. time I did a dissection of a seance, I was up on stage last year and um, I was talking about how spirits communicated in different ways. And then my phone went off and started rambling off the news articles talking about how Xi Jinping <laughs> had extended the opening ceremony for North Korea during the Olympics. And I'm like, Oh, that's weird. And I just kind of put it up and I was like, wouldn't that be weird, guys, if there was an actual ghost trying to contact me right now? And I was just like, nah. <laughs> nah, probably not. What ghost news? news. They don't got that five. The news ghost. <laughs> the news ghost. What's the news? I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, I'm going to bombard your eardrum one more time with one more song. And I think I actually have a, the, the ability to breathe this time. So this song is called Houdini Don't Believe You. <laughs> Everybody having a good time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Huh? In the early 1900s, seance scene was popping, and the medium just rocking. There was no sure sign of stopping. In the age of spiritualism, it's definitely an airship. Stepping in a stone cold magical pimp. He got that high 40 tail and that sleight of hand. He knows all your evil gimmicks and he think your flavor plan. Parking fraudulent claims across the land. Your numbers up. Hit the lights. He sees your master plan. I don't believe you. Who do you need to believe you? I just walk away. You got that hell to pay. You pop it from the dead. I don't believe you. Who do you need to believe you? Chaos is a fake ass. Seances in this guy's fucking spirit need to propose for the flies, such as me to craft it, or the spanker with x-ray eyes. He helped offer up a twenty-five hundred dollar prize for a psychic communication for a photo after someone dies. The cash was never claimed, so I think it would be wise to keep your game on low. Your bustin's on rise. He'll kick down your beaded curtain and look you in the eyes. I don't believe you! Really don't believe you! I just walk away, you got that hell of pain, you dropped it from the dead. I don't believe you! Really don't believe you! This seance is a fake expose, H-O-U-D-I, and I pay away. Arthur Conan Doyle of Sherlock, who me in vain was a soft spiritual this law who Dini became the bane of the spirit game. Deep fucking the hustlers and bringing the shame. They fell into disagreements, make sure their prisons were covered in flame. So Conan Doyle lost his son Kingsley in the Great War. The seances he went to showed him things he had never seen before. Who Dini was a skeptic. Deep fucking was his forte. Despite the logical nature of Doyle, Houdini would get up to say, I don't believe you! Houdini don't believe you! I just walk away, you got that hell of pay. You profit from the jail, I don't believe you! Houdini don't believe you! Seance is a fake, that's no thing. H-O-T-T-I-N-I-P-A-Y. Hey, Houdini don't believe you! Houdini makes a plan right before he was 
dead. A secret message to his wife and to Dini that led. Roosevelt believed it was from their favorite song. If he could speak after death, he would have to ask me along. Ten years straight, the self seances on Halloween tried to hear that secret message from her head to Dini. But ten years went silent. Then canceled the plan. Say, Tip, this, lock it up. So wait, lady man, don't believe you. Please don't believe you. I just walk away. Anyway, uh, I need to 
anytime I'm running late for work and I've lost my keys again, I simply pull out this handy dandy little spirit board from the closet and begin using black magic to begin the location process. When reaching out into the ethereal planes, I recommend summoning the true gentleman by the name of Jimbo for things like keys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, gentleman Jimbo. Gentleman Jimbo. He was a former tugboat operator in from Wisconsin and he was watching anything with Peter Falk in it. I can't say enough kind things about Jimbo or his pet toad. Five stars. Beware when conjuring the dark one that calls himself the Akamanto, though. After helping me find my favorite hat, he now owns one third of my soul. Uh, five out of five stars. Love that good, but I'm good stuff. Control. Uh, oh, I'm not doing that one. Curse review. Um, if we, I don't think we'll have time, but if you want me to read the worst review on the planet, titled, A Very Short Educational Review, that's a bunch of bullshit. You see how long this thing is? It is not neither short nor educational. It will hardly review. All right, uh, this one's by Chris. Uh, four out of five stars. Good product, but dangerous. Good, good produced, but be careful with it. I got a headache, and I almost throw up. So be extremely careful, please. Oh, I'll be so careful. You have no many cars. I am so filled with cars right now. I have so full of cars. Alright, this one's from Mike. Five out of five stars. Titled, Nice Boar. The woman says it works great. Of course she's a believer. And that's it. Because believing in stuff is women's work. <laughs> believing willy-nilly all day long. Yeah, this, this guy is a product of his time. Uh, cat, five out of five stars. A superstitious, vaguely ominous review. Those are my favorite. <laughs> I bought this board while tipsy. And <laughs> the best, best time to buy a week board. And I thought it'd be a funny thing slash fun thing. Those are the same. Funny slash fun thing to do with my friends at a Halloween party. So... A drunken Amazon purchase of a Ouija board <laughs> is not outside of the realm of probability. This is where it gets screwed up. When I opened the package, something about it just felt dark. I struggled to describe it. But it just felt like I should not, under any circumstances, use this Ouija board. So I immediately packaged it up and sent it back. I didn't even let it spend the night in my home. Something about it just felt off. Based off of the massive amount of positive reviews, I'm sure most people did not have the experience I had. It was a solid, nice product. <laughs> I could just feel something wrong, and I am glad I didn't keep it. So definitely buy it if you're looking for a good quality product Ouija board. Just be careful. Not careful. Be careful. Uh, so there's this broken? Yeah, let's, pull, let's do a little bit of Sherlock Holmes action. Let's, let's do forensic Batman action. Uh, so you're drunk, you buy a TG board, and then you open it up, the box, and you're like, spooky! And you shut the box, you go through the returning process of sending it back to like a UPS store or some crap, and then you feel compelled to go back to your house and open up Amazon and write a review telling people to buy a Ouija board. <laughs> this person, ladies and gentlemen, is possessed by a demon or a ghost. And this is what an Amazon review from a possessed person sounds like. Uh, this one's from Tiffany. Five out of five stars. Scared. I'm just giving this a five star review all the way around just because I'm afraid of any bad juju. I bought this for a Halloween decoration. Not actually gonna use it. Screw that. This board itself is sturdy, and so is the planchette. Very nice. Now I have it, slash won't try, slash try to summon any demons, slash spirits, slash ghosts, slash whatever you want to call them, and I won't. Good luck to you, if that's what you want to, but good decorating though. <laughs> I just got like emotional whiplash from that Amazon review. Uh, okay, so. This is actually kind of badass. I wish people would leave uh, reviews on my shop for my products being like, I'm just leaving a five-star review because I don't want any bad juju from this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It feels so nice on the yeah. inside. I know what I'm doing. Where you just like force someone to give you five stars out of fear. Oh, good stuff. <laughs> That's like, that's a special kind of Stockholm syndrome that's right Amazon there. <laughs> <laughs> that's Amazon. Uh, nobody found that helpful, which is hilarious. Okay, this one is by, this is my last one, last Amazon review. This is by Eli AP, five out of five stars. Very honest, this board. <laughs> and it goes 
I'm Dominican, and when I told my two Dominican girlfriends, they both thought I was crazy. Even my home was like, you're crazy, bro. Yes, I'm doing the two Dominican girlfriends Amazon Ouija board review again. I had such a good time reading it last time. It's just like I can feel the endorphins rushing across my brain because this guy, all he wants to do is brag about his two Dominican girlfriends. He wants you to know this intimately. Uh, so two Dominican girlfriends, and even his homie was like, you crazy, bro. I bought it because when I was younger, I bought myself a glow in the dark one with the money I earned from my summer job, which my Dominican aunt threw away. What's up with Dominican stuff? <laughs> saying, it it was, saying it was from the devil. Uh, a medley of very unfortunate emojis. Uh, well, back then, they would communicate with me freely. This time, I bought it as a shortcut to contact my higher self, since I'm on this spiritual journey, if you know what he means. Uh, so, how does he, can you even, like, hack your own higher self with a Ouija board? How the hell does that even work? That'd be like, you're schizophrenic. I don't believe it. Um, I'm skeptical. All the voices in my head say I'm not, I'm not schizophrenic at all. All right, uh, first thing, <laughs> the first thing it said to me was, no, 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 no. And it moved to the actual <laughs> note on the board. So I said, goodbye, and I tried it a few times after that, and they would knock my hand off the board. My two Dominican girlfriends, <laughs> lest we forget. So it still works, but I'm not allowed to use it. I returned it, and I got my money back. If you're using the Ouija board, it's cool. You're not going to get possessed or anything, but you should respect the fact that you're connecting with entities. If they say no and refuse to let you connect, remember, they know more about the spiritual side than you do. And if they're saying no, respect it. Get your money back. Now, happy holidays, y'all. Be safe. Cowboy emoji, thumbs up emoji. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so dumb. It's like, oh, you're dipped from Nevada. Stupid when you were born. Oh, oh God. Jeez, I love it. <laughs> no, but he's like bromancing. And I'm complete. Well, uh, that was the Amazon Ouija board review. Don't check me down. I'll the forbidden one. Uh, I guess we're about at time, right? We're, we're wrapping up. All right, well, uh, if you guys have any more questions or anything, feel free to trip me in the hallway and ask me as I'm falling down. Uh, but otherwise, thank you for letting me squawk at you, and if uh, the, the, the powers that be deemed this fun enough to bring me back for another year of doing this stuff, then I will make it bigger, better, more crazy, more levitations, more... Oh, uh, actually, there's a way to levitate this table. Uh, would you please pinch those little brown doodads and pull them up? Ah, ooh. Now, when I was looking into levitating tables, uh, I actually consulted the great Dunninger's pamphlets and the Houdini broadcasts and stuff and to figure out what they were uh, demonstrating. This is how you lift the table. And so they created these sort of devices that look something like a stick on a cuff. And so I, of course, rebuilt, I rebuilt my own. And they don't work. They don't work at all. Uh, but the idea is that you put the cuffs onto your hands and you hide them amongst your long-sleeved person. And after everybody does the, the check, the bad man moves in the goods, the, you put the sticks on and stuff like that. When it comes time to levitate the table, two people on opposite ends of the table with the cuffs, they would stick. Uh, here, let me, uh, let me get your hand out of that. Uh, so you would uh, take your hand and then you would shove it, the stick under the table, but you put your hand on top of the table so you could still hold the hands. And when the time was right, and the stars were right, you would all lift it up. Ooh. I'm skeptical. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I tried that, and uh, we nearly broke our wrists trying to do with that. So that design is totally screwed up. Uh, needs more workshopping. So I decided a very low-tech effort, which is this. Uh, these little straps, and everybody would hold their hands, and, and everyone can and continue. If you even yeah, want to, you can hike your arms up a little higher. And... Uh, uh, that way, when everyone's holding each other's hands, you can't feel that weird little rope thing. And this trick could be used with a smaller string, put it into the crook of your arm. No one's going to be inspecting that in the dark. And so when the time comes, the table will levitate. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Yeah. All right, let's give our seance performers a round of applause. <laughs> a big round of a hand for intern Charlie, who is officially no longer an intern this year. Hey! He's officially just Charlie. He's been an intern for like four years. Oh, I'll be honest. Uh, it was too he has suffered years. Years. Uh, Cool. Uh, that's it, y'all. So without further, oh, you need to close the gate. 
You don't want to leave the spirits wandering around, don't you? Oh, yeah. Everyone join hands. Oh, oh. Everyone join hands. And the way that you would um, conclude a seance is you would say something along the lines of this. Uh, <coughs> oh, great spirits. Close your eyes. Oh, great spirits. We thank you for joining us in this something communion. We hope you find your way back to wherever you are. And don't come back unless we ask you to, because that's how that works. And <laughs> uh, go away. Come back next time. Okay, bye. Close the gate. Close the gate. Say it with me now. Close the gate. 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 Okay, get closed. All right. That's it. That's the seance, everybody. Feel free to mingle, don't pass out. It's like 1104. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, please check out D&D Journey of the 5th Edition and Ragnarok and roll a Scion Hero to Ragnarok Story. Also, check out our Patreon page for more content and behind-the-scenes things, as well as joining us for a one-shot game or two.